Hello people, uh, welcome to Power Sites by Power View. This is our first episode where we aim to invite experts from various fields and derive insights to power your business, people and much more. Our today's guest is Aviral Bajpai. He is a data scientist at Power View with more than 12 years of industry experience. And I will quickly welcome him and you know let him introduce himself in detail. Welcome Aviral on this first ever podcast or Power View that is Power Sites. Uh, could you just quickly introduce about yourself on you know what you have been doing and what could be done with the amazing pieces of AI? Thank you so much for inviting me, Deepak. Pleasure being here. Um, I am a solution architect, um, triple IT alumni, uh, as well as Liverpool John Moores University alumni. And I've been with Pavi for around seven years now. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a few things that, you know, we offer in terms of AI consulting, data science consulting, uh, the kind of platforms that we have on the AI side and things like that. Awesome. Thanks. So, uh, what we are going to discuss today for the benefit of our audiences, what is AI consulting, how AI can power your business? What are the typical challenges which businesses face when adopting AI? Some popular use cases and a lot of questions which grapple businesses when they want to start with AI, but they don't know how to start. So that's what we are going to discuss today. And, you know, Aviral is going to be a guest to discuss all those ideas with us. So uh, to start with uh, Aviral, what, how would you define AI consulting <clears throat> or AI services for, for businesses who have no clue of what AI means beyond what it's called as artificial intelligence? How do you define it? Yeah. So. I think uh, taking AI slightly uh, in a more broader sense, it, it it sort of transforms into data science. And data science is essentially the to, uh, to leverage the kind of data that they're already having. It's not like something that they need to create. Or in more cases, it's not something that they have to create or change in their processes. It is just the the act of using their data in the right way to solve business problems. Um, some very quick, you know, things that I wanted to sort of touch upon. Um, right. So we were talking about uh, data science, right? <clears throat> yeah. So data science, just broadening AI into uh, some things that can be done manually as well. Uh, data science is the, is the scale or the ability of an organization to make sense of their data in trying to solve business problems or, you know, extracting a higher amount of value from the, from the kind of data that they already have about the customers, about the kind of transactions that are happening about the demographics of the customers, so on and so forth. These are the first few things that came into my head. Uh, essentially you are trying to transform your business into, uh, into processes that are making decisions based on data rather than instinct cut feel uh, so that there is higher quantification of what you are doing and why, you know, so what decisions did you make based on what did you make it and higher amount of uh, retrospective analysis. Ki, did it work? Did it not work? What can we tweak? Um, right. So instead of, instead of evolving, let's say the mental capacity of your key managers, you're, you're evolving the process itself which then becomes highly resilient. So whether you lose all of your managers tomorrow, you know, your processes still remain. And, uh, you know, uh, therefore it's, it's a much, much higher uh, resilience uh, to your organization and process that you get overall. And what we've seen is that most of the uh, firms that uh, we reach out to or, or reach out to us, they have invested in data initiatives but they don't end up taking that plunge into becoming data driven when they're, you know, taking the actual decisions. They, they keep to the conventional uh, wisdom and uh, instincts, uh, more or less. 
but yeah that that then sort of uh, keeps them back from uh, deriving the max value out of out of their data for sure got it so it, what you are saying is you using ai along with data science you try to structure your business data you try to give it a form you consume it you try to derive insights from it which could you be used for multiple business processes and and so on deriving insights on you know they could be used in multiple ways in you know if we just had to simplify it right so the high level problems that we would target on the first go for a, for a usual organization would be you know is your are your are the reporting is the reporting that you're getting aligned with the business strategy that is you know point number 1 and there are there are always uh, you know good sort of um good pointers that we get in terms of what the top management is not receiving today right uh, um what is the kind of skill set that you have for data and analytics internally right um and we can impact there very very quickly these are the you know top uh, high impact kind of things that we do right at the get go uh challenge the the ongoing process of of decision making in in high impact projects within the organization and also the cultural side of things these are the major problems that people have and talk to us about so what would be the the popular benefits or you may say the top benefits you have seen and how ai and data science is helping businesses in today's world so the the first benefit and the, the biggest the largest benefit is that uh you morph into uh into an organization that is able to improve itself through analysis uh and that is priceless um going from an organization that that takes instinctive decisions and then only looks at their top line and bottom line uh down to you know five levels of why you know why did why did we take this decision what were the uh what were the factors running behind this quantified and then taking the next why okay so why did we why did we have this kind of analysis what drove that so if you just do the to the first cut 5y analysis you will get very deep into uh you know some of the problems that let's say we identified earlier so uh is how 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 did we end up with the reporting that is not aligned with uh let's say the business strategy or why do we why did we end up with uh, uh let's say not having enough focus on data and analytics in general as a skill set as a process things like that but yeah at the end of the day it's all about driving two things it is about driving top line it's about driving the the bottom line and overall if you if you take the long term impact of the two it is about creating value for the for the organization in general got it so it it it's helping the businesses to transform into a a company which which uses their data which uses their tech and makes it you may say into a into a potential potential you know treasure inside treasure of insights that's what and what do you think is driving this significant change or you know adoption of ai for a lot of businesses we have seen amazon doing a lot of things netflix doing a lot of things spotify and you name all the popular ones and they are using ai and data science in some or the other form to solve so many business problems where what is driving what is causing this whole shift uh, or or has caused this shift for the past few years i think the the major shift is uh, is the two things that i mentioned earlier driving the top line and the bottom line right and there are ways that you can uh for amazon for example it will be primarily driving the top line on the consumer facing side where they have invested heavily on recommendation systems 
on trying to present the right kind of relevant search results because they have such a huge data set right so just presenting the right kind of products to the right kind of audience uh, when they're searching for something can lead to much better let's say conversions from search to actual transactions so they would track that as a metric and try to optimize that that's on the top line side on the bottom line side there's tremendous amount of uh, process optimizations that you can do in terms of logistics in terms of where you store your inventory the time for the inventory to reach the kind of audience uh today amazon is in a state where they're preemptively shipping inventory down to where they are assuming the uh the demand is going to come from and they have such rich data uh that uh, and and such a good culture around data science that they're able to very almost uh, accurately predict uh, where let's say where would the what's the distribution of one plus one plus is new phone buyers come from uh, so how much of that is going to come from mumbai how much of that is going to come from come from bangalore from you know the, the nodal centers uh, where the where the majority of the uh, where the majority of the buyers are and then preemptively shipping stuff there so that you know the when you when you see your uh, search results it says delivered within one day and that becomes a big driver into sort of conversions so it we just talked about two things one was you know lowering your time of inventory just in time inventory for for when you are getting stuff so when you know this is the count kind of inventory that i have and this is the lead time that i'm giving you can plan that inventory very quickly uh to be just in time so you don't you have minimum amount of time in the in the warehouse which reduces your costs and then of course uh, if you're sh- shipping it directly to the place that it's most likely to get bought uh, you know you are also converting much better uh, so yeah, the, these are the kind of top two uh, top line and bottom line benefits that i'm able to think of from an amazon standpoint from an netflix standpoint i think it's since it's mostly digital uh logistics doesn't play as big of a part uh they have very strong tech of course on the full stack side um uh, where where pavi does work as well uh, we are able to you know build systems that that deliver the right kind of content to the right kind of uh people uh, but beyond that i think the major uh, data science you know investments that netflix would be making would be recommendation systems so recommending the right kind of content to the right kind of users at the right time so uh, depending on the time of the day uh, the day of the week and the month of the year you would get recommended different things uh, when you open your netflix app for example yeah so i mean you the point which you touched upon and this is from from my marketing perspective a lot of people when they think about ai or personalization you know those few things stick with them one is the definitely the recommendation engine which has been popular as well netflix and you Correct, know yeah. amazon then then the the ad networks like google facebook you know how you recommend friends how you recommend those ads recommend locations and that is where a a lot of thought process is end that is what ai or personalization for a lot of people is and you Correct. can't blame them because it's it's so vast and there are so many you know concepts and words you have ai you have machine learning you have data science and while and this is my personal experience we encounter ai and you know machine learning in so different ways like grammarly where we use it uses it to improve your writing then definitely the canva it also has its own you know recommendation engine for templates so that is where it ends and mostly it's around yeah. the e-commerce front what are the other pieces where you could imagine or you have seen ai and data science play, playing an immense role maybe that could be the non glamorous part i am talking about which people don't realize because it's not up front but i am sure there are going to be a lot of uh, such instances as well any any few use Tremendous. cases that you have come across which are amazingly non glamorous but the mm-hmm. impact is really amazing for which we don't realize yeah there's tons of those so the reason why if you if you understand the uh, the consulting business uh, you would you would start to see these patterns so you usually start with platforms 
right which are mostly to do with quick results that uh, let's say you wouldn't have usually but is achievable through platforms and not too much expense into uh, let's say uh, hours spent uh, or or let's say not as um uh, resource intensive let's say compared to the other things so that's that's how you usually start with platforms and and the recommendation systems for example become the uh, you know sort of the hot topic uh, because there are there are a lot of uh, you know platforms including the stuff that we build uh, that that can benefit you there so that becomes a good starting point but once you start to see the benefits of this uh, this can basically be applied to anything let me give you an example so um one thing that we did talk about was uh, inventory and logistics optimization right uh, so where is the demand going to come from forecast that and therefore you know where to ship stuff before the order actually arrives that is that is one kind of prediction the other kinds of predictions you could make uh, could be to do with let's say quality assurance um which could reduce the amount of time it takes for you to uh, qa any product of yours um whether it is to go on the uh, e-commerce platforms that you have or whether it is to let's say uh, qa something that you put up in a store uh, physically uh, a lot of research has gone into that uh, in, into classification systems let's say which can classify whether uh, whether something uh, is ready for product uh, uh ready for marketing use or not right and that can be programmed based on the kind of things that you would look for when you were uh, when you were quality when you were doing qa manually and you can optimize or automate a lot of that into these processes uh, that are then automated uh, reduces your turnaround time from production to uh, sales and therefore helps your uh, helps your top line and i believe it it also has cost implications so i'll show bottom line as well uh beyond that i think there's other examples so let's say uh an industry like the motor sport industry if you if you take that example uh you run simulations of laps so formula 1 for example would run millions of simulations of the cars based on their current performance data running laps around the circuits that they're going to race at and then optimize the strategy that they would use inside the race to 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 avail the minimum time spent in achieving let's say 70 laps around the race track so what kind of tires to use when when to come for the pit stop so that your your uh, rivals who you are fighting in the race are at the most vulnerable point or uh, let's say when when do your strategies have the most opportunity to pass your rival uh, on the race track things like that of course now everybody is doing it so uh, you have to fight essentially they are these are ai systems fighting against each other so everybody is running these billions and millions of simulations and trying to optimize the strategy but yeah that that's that's the interesting bit so if you if you follow motor racing you know exactly what i'm talking about uh this is a very relevant thing for uh the the f1 season just ended so <laughs> i'm still in that kick yeah agree so i i remember one such conversation i had with arun he is a ceo for another company which deals into ar and vr he mentioned one such training system which used computer vision along with other technologies to mm. ensure that the 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 workers in a factory they could train right in the factory shop itself when they are doing trying to do something the computer vision would tell them right up front if they make any mistake if they try to fit any part in a different way it would identify and sound an alarm and a trigger so instead of spending all those hours training them in a classroom or using all other mediums and then pushing them in the factory floor this could happen right on the factory floor itself and a real time learning system which you know is much more impactful than any notebook or video could tell you so absolutely I mean, that was amazing and and taking that idea further if you just use those same models on let's say your cctv footage right 
you know where non compliance is happening on a real time basis without people having to look at cctv feeds uh, people people can miss stuff but ai models won't so if there is a tool that is not supposed to be in a location where it's 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 put right now or if you have a, a lot of build up of uh, let's say waste around a certain factory uh, uh, factory machinery which shouldn't be there it will get flagged immediately and get escalated accordingly and it can be dealt with uh, without any you know need for people looking over each other's shoulders people looking at you know video feeds and things like that so yeah training uh, massive uh, you know implications compliance heavy implications uh, especially real time so you don't have to wait for an audit to happen uh, it's happening in real time so you know everything is compliant to what you want it to be um yeah uh, i think when people see things like this start to happen uh, what what starts to change is the culture of the organization so people become uh, sort of more aware that things will be dealt with immediately and swiftly and therefore it becomes a force of habit that they won't ever do it again uh, especially with with you know manufacturing units that are getting set up this is extremely important of course once that culture is set you you hardly don't you hardly ever need this but you still have it as a backup if if and when things go wrong so yeah so see, that's an interesting point so see we all understand the the benefits at least you know a lot of people are waking up to the realities of what could be done and you know going beyond terminator or all those other movies or, you know which typically you know scare the hell out of us when it comes to ai and while we understand the benefits you know i have seen that there are certain barriers there are certain challenges which stops companies from adopting this one which i am definitely aware of is the the myth or you may the 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 piece which terrifies them it would ai take away our jobs or you know would we be redundant after ai while there is some amount of truth on it i definitely believe it will augment a lot more it will help you upskill a lot more with you know all those pieces so now that's one what are what, what are the other pieces you see which is stopping people from adopting ai what are the barriers interesting that you touched upon it i think it's the same uh, it's the same thing that happens uh, every time right so if you invent a uh, let's say when hammers were first invented it would have been you know now now a lot lesser of lot a lot lesser number of carpenters would be needed because a, a single carpenter would be able to do the same job that you know five others would have been doing earlier it's the same thing it's the same cycle that keeps on repeating uh this is just another generation of tools that are let's say slightly more advanced than the last ones but they're still tools uh you still need people who are motivated to use them uh you still need people who are motivated to create them and uh, you know and there's another story in keep in keeping using it as well so the initial after the initial sort of uh, romantic period of uh, uh, you know uh, the initial craziness and the initial you know hype side sort of dies down you still need to keep doing it on a day to day basis and that's that's a completely different story but the other the other thing that you talked about was uh, what stops people from uh, going towards uh, going towards data science or ai solutions one is that most organizations don't have data science as a process and therefore they probably don't uh, don't value the the data that they are already collecting correctly uh, they do understand that there's something there but the problem is that they are not able to quantify what all they could do if they try to do something what all is there that they could do with their data uh, uh processes as they exist today uh, i think that's the single biggest uh, problem the other thing is looking for uh quick um solutions rather than focusing on creating a culture of uh, data driven decisions 
I think that is where a lot of people also sort of, uh, uh, I won't say get it wrong, but I would say they miss out on a lot of value around data science and AI because they look at it as a, as a, let's say a short term investment for a certain specific goal. And if you already have a data driven culture and then you're looking for something quick from uh, uh, an external team, perfect. And I think that's, that's augmentation. Uh, but if you don't have something internal, then, you know, look at the strategy side first and then boil that down to, let's say a, a set of deliverables that you want worked on rather than just looking at the deliverables, which I think is, is that's, that's the slight short sightedness that comes in there. So there are three things which I could derive from this. One is the lack of awareness on how data science or AI solutions could help. Second yeah. is lack of expertise within the company. While uh, And correct me if I am wrong. While you may have a tech team or you may have a tech department, AI solutions need a specific expertise is what I'm assuming. Okay. Correct. Great. And the, the, the more subtle point there is that, do you have that, uh, data driven orientation as a set of KRAs for your teams, right? That could inject some amount of data driven culture into your organization. That's, that's one quick fix that you could apply, but having people step out their BAU and then also, uh, you know, um, impact the processes that can help you drive value out of data. That's asking a lot. Uh, and there are people that would do this, but, uh, it's, it's, it's a very big bet that you're making. If, if that's the bet that you're making it, it's difficult for somebody to carry out their day to day work and, you know, be that uh, champion of data science for you as well. Yeah, I can imagine you would also need that kind of support and that kind of mindset within the organization to understand that this needs to be done, but this is equally critical. It's, it's, it's exactly. what you are talking about the cultural mindset as well. Exactly. So once, once you have that as a part of your business strategy, you have a, have it as a part of your culture that you keep reinforcing, then things start to happen for sure. Uh, but yeah, the, the initial bit is difficult and, uh, most, most, not most all organizations start small, right? So they're optimizing for the short, short term when they're small. They're optimizing for product market fit. They're optimizing for revenue. They're optimizing for business sustainability, right? And at that point, they're probably not looking at, uh, uh, at, at what, what kind of data are we collecting and what, how can we use it? So that comes in later when you're, when you're looking to truly build a sustainable business, which is, which is the last bit of the journey, right? After you achieve product market, that, that is when people start, start to thought, sort of think about it. But I would say even for startups, it's, it's good to just keep an eye on what, what you could be doing. Um, but yeah, it's usually later that people sort of get to it. Got it, got it. So after outlining these challenges, barriers, let's say if somebody starts exploring an AI solution, what could be the number one problem? Why companies fail? in adopting or implementing this, if you just had to identify one critical problem. I think I touched upon the fact that, you know, most of the businesses don't, uh, you know, end up creating a data driven culture. And, uh, the, the reasons are very simple. Uh, you would get low executive level support uh which we could also call executive sponsorship right uh the sponsorship comes in terms of mental bandwidth the sponsorship comes in terms of time that uh that resources would have to spend to 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 achieve things uh there is there is a challenge in identifying where to start um uh, so that you do get some benefits in the short term and then also you, you still end up sort of, because you need results for, for some process to get, get kickstarted. So that bootstrapping process is really critical. 
if you don't identify the right projects to begin with uh you know it gets it gets swept aside as something that is uh blue sky thinking um and it gets you know more and more hard for you to justify the investments that you're making on on data science if you don't get some sort of results so focusing a little bit on the short term so that the 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 process has become sustainable uh it's very similar to let's say starting a business right uh you do need some sort of traction to prove that you have a fit with the market um so that it's the same here so the identification is a major challenge what to start with and what kind of uh when you've identified a process let's say you you identify that you want to uh for the short term you'd like to build an a recommendation system because that's one that we touched upon being a quick fix or a, or a, or you know the top the top one of the top five things that you would do uh, if you if you pick that then what are the kind of recommendations that your business needs um are you picking the right kind of uh models are you the right kind of metrics to tune so that your transaction volumes do end up increasing in the way that you were uh, supposed to have uh that that is the challenge uh, there a uh, shortage of dna skills as i said uh, is another one so usually people don't have um a data science uh, process right um there would be people in the organization that would be highly data driven highly analytical but uh, you know translating that into uh, a data science process is a different uh, ball game altogether so that's a challenge and uh, prevalent cultures that that would be the other thing correct so if if a company or a business has to start you know exploring a uh, the ai solution approach or want to implement it what what are the steps or what is your playbook to recommend them how they should start and uh, assume that this is a company who's trying it out for the first time how would you ask them to you know go in this direction so i would start with the problems of alignment um as i said the first things to do would be to look at where your business strategy is at the moment um and what are the problems that you're facing that would give us the ability to churn out let's say what are the quick fixes so that you know the process keeps on evolving or you kick start the process well and the other bit is also the mid and long term where we would set up let's say what what your data science processes should be like so that your your uh, long term uh analysis of your own data is is going correctly so those would be the two sort of buckets that we would focus on um if you think that uh, the the alignment within your strategy versus the reporting that you're getting is missing some key ingredients um uh, that is purely reporting based we could focus on that if there are certain business uh, optimization problems that we can fix we can we can take those into consideration um uh, one example would be let's say if you're having too much if you're uber and you're having too much idle time for your drivers and you want to understand what could i do to uh, to have lo- lower idle time um we could look at the data and propose a few solutions um another example on let's say the e-commerce site would be if you have a lot of abandoned cart items uh and you're not able to pinpoint what the exact reason is and why are your abandoned cart uh, ratios higher than let's say the industry average uh we could help with that that could be one of the few quick fixes that we could apply to let's say get the uh get the processes bootstrapped uh, a lot of our... just off the top of my head of course this would get precise as as we get more inputs from the organizations a lot of our customers are from the apparel uh, industry as well could you touch upon a few popular use case or problems which apparel industry can you know get started with or you have seen solving using the 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 AI or data science solutions so if you're manufacturing uh we could help optimize the kind of skews the kind of variants that you should be producing 
the kind of demands that you could see coming forward uh, going for i mean into the future right that could help optimize manufacturing processes or align buying decisions into whatever you're trying to sell if you are let's say uh, a process house that's printing uh, we could we could help you with the kind of uh, imprinting that is happening today um and therefore you can maybe invest in optimizing those kind of printing processes the other thing that you could also do is let's say return rates um if you are having a uh, higher than industry average return rate we could look at the data and suggest a few things that you could do in terms of uh, information that could be uh, you know shown to the user up front some process lapse that we could identify uh, that could lead to lower return rates or in general try to optimize the kind of products that you are pushing to the user um uh, when they're searching for something uh in general it, of three or four sort of uh points of the top of my head for a, for a parallel let's say yeah so i i one of these things i recently read how i think if i'm pronouncing the name of the company correctly shane it's it's a apparel company from china if i'm not wrong they their manufacturing and you know their go to market time from manufacturing to you know ensuring the product is available to the end customers they have reduced it drastically to a few days and if i remember that article correctly what they do is they use google trends to identify the popular search you know what people are searching for that gets translated to their team of designers immediately within hours the designers then design this and it goes into production everything happens within days so you know and the whole process is automated so from getting identifying the demand to ensuring that the products are available on their store happens within days and all this through ident- you know automating processes using uh, ai solutions and you know you can't imagine unless you read something like this can actually be done and it's amazing we know how successful they have been so i mean well, that's massive that's massive so even if you are not increasing your top line you're you're reducing so much of your inventory so much of your lag time that your your bottom line gets impacted heavily and one thing that you touched upon is which is really powerful and uh, i think we haven't touched upon it today is that not all of the data that you need to impact these problems come from within your organization right so you talked about google trends that's one data set uh, we could we there's there's so many different uh, widely available data sets out there that are open that help you understand where things are going how things are moving uh, so augmenting your data uh, and to begin with uh, starting from the macro and then trying to you know understand where you are within that macro and what's your micro within that macro so that we as a as a as a data science process don't ask for data that is that is uh, already available from the wider market uh, so that so that our um, our impact on your day to day businesses is the least possible uh, we we always sort of start with with the macro and then boil it down to okay what is the precise data that we need from within the organization uh, that could that could uh, take it a step further um and very honestly maybe we can do a lot just by uh, just by projecting the right kind of uh, macro data to uh, the business as well so yeah that's there's there's value there itself which is massive so uh, a lot of what you just mentioned it it seems so simple to even get started with it you know you don't need any fancy data sources you don't need to structure a lot of things not a lot of infrastructure is needed to get started with this now I, i can imagine a company or a business having challenge in even thinking on those lines coming out of the business as usual mindset like you rightly pointed out so one is definitely they won't know this could be done second is if this can be done how should it be done is it huge do i need to get involved in it uh in day to day thing so i i i imagine that they would need significant help in even starting this so 
I imagine consultation would be a huge piece of even getting this started, like in any huge uh, process or tech deployment or any, you know, enterprise level product. So is its consultation also a part of this? If yes, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, consulting is the, if you think about it, it's a very good fit in this scenario. So you are not using your existing resources to come up with what kind of data science process you should have going forward, right? So you're not using any of the current bandwidth that also, uh, since you are bringing in minds from outside, you do get a fresh perspective on things. Uh, you're not limited by your current processes or your current process thinking or your current culture or, you know, anything like that, you get a fresh perspective on everything. That's, that's a big one. And, uh, in the beginning, at least, uh, your consulting, uh, expend expenses are not really huge. So you're, you're just trying to understand the possibilities. So you start small, you understand the possibilities. Um, we always suggest starting with POCs, uh, proof of concepts that, you know, we could do with somebody and actually show a certain amount of impact before they make a substantial investment on a full fledged process. Um, so yeah, start, start with, uh, a small, uh, conversation in terms of what your business problems are, try and understand where the quick uh, solutions could lie, uh, because there will be a few that can be achieved with, let's say just, just the platforms that we have, uh, the, the AI based platforms that we offer, uh, uh, and, and then take it forward to the next step where, where you say, okay, I do want to set up a long-term process and how could I do that? And then, you know, sort of at the end, the, the goal is to transition everything to, to a, to a business, uh, analysis or a data science process that you have set up internally and hand it over to them so that they can do it sustainably. Understood. So while the consultation bit, I understand what, what I'm thinking is if, if a business needs to start with this, what would be the, the average cost for a business to start? I, I don't know. Uh, I read somewhere recently, I think it was a Forbes article where the top four consultants the project cost starts anywhere between 500,000 to all the way, you know, thousand, thousand. Now that's a huge cost for a small or medium company. And if, if that's the case, then I imagine why people don't opt for it. Is that the case or, you know, a, a small or medium company can start at a much lower threshold and then optimize or improve or increase as they plan to, as they see results from it. So the, the pricing is more or less tied down to the kind of hours that are spent, uh, you know, trying to drive value to your business. Of course, um, there is usually a return retainer based model, uh, but what, and, and I'm sure, uh, you know, pe people are better. There are other people that are better, uh, you know, uh, capable of explaining, uh, the, what the kind of pricing models are that we offer, but in terms of outcomes, uh, let's say and a two to four hour advisory session or, or a day or two max would help you understand, let's say what the industry best practices are, what are the benchmarks, how, how off from that are you in, in a ballpark, uh, you know, uh, in a ballpark number. And then uh, in about, let's say four to five weeks. Uh, we would say that we can lay out a, a good, uh, data science and analytics strategy and a roadmap for you, uh, to, based on what your, uh, what your current requirements are based on what your current problems are based on what your current offerings are, uh, the kind of industries that you're dealing with, uh, which would, which would tangibly, which it would be, what kind of data maturity do you have? What kind of data maturity do we recommend going forward? Uh, how aligned or how can we align the business, uh, with, with the data and analytics strategy? Um, what are the high impact use cases that you could have, uh, to begin with and things like that. And then let's say in, in use case design, uh, 
um in 5 weeks we could get to let's say uh what what our ROIs could be if you go with a certain POC uh on a certain uh problem that we've identified together and uh functional and technical blueprints that we could share with you uh you know those are the usual timelines that we have for around 5 weeks you'll you'll have uh, you'll have these things and then going taking this a step forward you know if if you do want to go into an org restructuring uh you know we could do that let's say in about 8 to 12 weeks uh depending on how complicated it is got it got it so yeah you can start small and then scale as you feel the need to do so for a a, a smaller company i i can imagine the consultation bit should work for them to you know figure out whether it's something they the business wants to pursue and now instead of going for the the top guys i mean maybe if you start smaller uh you know this could be on the levels of a of a smaller enterprise product where you could explore and then plan to scale as you want so would it be safe to assume that you know even if you plan to do a small POC or a automate a small piece, anything between forty to sixty thousand grand dollars would 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 that be a fair assumption to get started with this? For a small POC, for sure, I uh, I'm pretty comfortable that we can impact uh, at at least one, if not more, uh, of your of your current uh, you know burning problems. Yeah, I mean that that. that gives a huge relief to you know companies who want to move to the other side and not get burdened by the huge cost so yeah i i think that that, that definitely yeah helps. i think that's a good you, you've nailed it i think that's a uh, that's that's usually where things would start great so fair enough so any uh, any any particular project or you know deployment or a case study that you could elaborate for us obviously you don't have to name the client for your confidential purpose but you know anything that from how you from what how you identified the solution to what did you propose how did it went and what are the results you seen that would give us a, our audience a fair idea of what can be done how it works and a real life example would be you know, amazing to to look for that yeah so one uh one good example that i'm able to um that i am able to recollect is we optimized uh procurements for an fmcg company um and uh, it, their their primary procurement their core procurement was coco they're into chocolates and therefore they have to procure coco uh so we did uh some data science around what the coco prices are what the seasonality is of course some of that bit is already uh you know taken care of within those organizations but uh, the trading halves of of those organizations uh benefited a lot with 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 the insights that we were able to drive and they could they could hedge their prices in a way that uh, made it more affordable in the long run um Yeah, so essentially we were benefiting from the price going down as well as up while uh, on the other side e- even if you're taking seasonality into account you're just buying at the right points and hedging helps you sort of reap those benefits year long rather than waiting for the right time to to buy and we did it through uh, let's say uh, fno futures and options derivatives uh, that the trading teams could uh, sort of hedge it with and uh, and yeah um i i believe that uh, even if you impact the average cost over the year by by 1 cent it's a huge a huge amount of money at the end of the year that they are able to take out and put into other initiatives uh you know things like data science for example <laughs> uh so, because these these are you know they these procurements go into thousands of metric tons so uh cent per per uh, a cent per 
even you know 100 kgs or whatever it's is a huge amount uh, for them so so you are able to project what, you know what kind of pricing would be whether it is going to be high it's, it's going to be low and accordingly plan the procurement is my understanding correct accordingly plan the procurement as well as the hedging of the procurement so you you position your uh, your assets in a way that you you derive the benefits of the cost going up as well as down and overall your average procurement price goes down by by making those hedging bets right so this could be applied for any business that procures or buys quantity uh, buys a particular product or a set of products in huge quantity right exactly so anything that is publicly traded if you are buying that you could benefit from uh, initiatives like these and of course that's that's a that's a use case for let's say something that you're procuring heavily or um bigger firms that are heavy on procurement uh you could think of similar things down the line where let's say a very very simple example for e-commerce would be if you don't have a great uh product descriptions uh if you don't have great images there are models that can be quick fixes to those uh and we could based on the kind of in- insights that we have about the product uh we could uh help you create the the description automatically or let's say uh create create images for your products depending on the kind of products that you have we could help you create the images for the products as well uh in an automated manner we could help you uh, do the qa of those uh, of the, of the product list in an automated manner we could help you do ab tests between what uh, what description of a product worked better than the other and then help you sort of transition into okay this this kind of language or this kind of product name helps me to uh, attain better transaction rates uh, attain lower drop offs things like that right so the qa bit so if 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 let's say and you know images are are one of the key factors for anybody buying online so imagine if somebody uploads a whole load of images on a particular website and would it be possible to figure out a way to identify images which are maybe blurred or really low resolution or maybe controversial for example or contradictory or things like this Oh yeah, we can do tons of stuff there. So we our models, and this is this is right from the platforms that we have. So our platforms are able to identify whether this uh, whether images are let's say um, work safe. Uh, does it have any medical content? Does it have any racially charged content? Does it have any uh, kind of content that would be uh, let's say. Um, anything that needs to be moderated out uh right uh, and our our platforms are really quick in in understanding new frameworks of moderation as well so if there's certain specific things that you look for which you want moderated out we could we could build a very quick uh, moderation uh, you know uh, moderation model that that could help you do that in an automated way that applies not only to the product images but to user generated content as well uh so if if you are allowing pictures to be uploaded on the re- user reviews right somebody has to sort of go in and check so you could automate a lot of that away these are highly sensitive models so uh nothing that is even has has the slight uh, you know um per probability of being something that you don't want on your site could be flagged and automate automatically be sent to a to a moderator if it is a semi automated process or could be deleted altogether uh, or or sent to a different kind of bucket altogether if if uh, if you want it to be completely automated uh so that's on the quality side we could do similar things with let's say uh, how crisp was my image i could i could uh, give you uh, a rating or an index of uh, how how what is the quality of my images as perceived by a user and you would hope that that goes up over time and that is something that you could track on a dashboard 
Another thing that you could do is usually when we're looking at products in e-commerce, these are, let's say, uh, I, I shoot one image of a product and if there's a different skew, um, usually it's cheaper to not photograph the other product, but actually just Photoshop, um, you know, a different color onto that product. Um, so we could build systems that help you understand whether that match is perfect. The other things that you could do if is if you are photographing two different variants, uh, there's usually a problem of um, alignment between the two. So when you are moving between two different skews of the same product, you you see the product move a little bit from one one skew to another because the alignment is never perfect, right? The the camera of, uh, angle is never perfect, perfectly it, the same. It just the, feels off due to some reason. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So we could help you highlight those things. And, uh, there are a few fixes that we can apply automatically as well. Uh, so, you know, of, like, th those are some things that we could do. This is great. This is great. I mean, like I said, I mean, a lot of these things are people are not aware that this could be done and, you know, you need somebody to either you, you know, constantly read about them or, you know, you need somebody who can tell them all these things could be done. So, yeah, not only that, I think it's also, if you, if you look at the, the internet penetration that we have, especially in India now, uh, people are now exposed to really high quality e-commerce, uh, experiences across the world. And when they come back to something that you created on your own, they sort of notice that sub subconsciously and that impacts your transaction rates, whether you are, uh, whether you are looking at it that way or not. Uh, so people could be dropping off because they think, okay, uh, I, I see that there is a problem with this image. I don't know if the, if I trust this product anymore and then they just move out and all that you see is that, you know, people search for it and didn't buy and you're seeing a drop off in that sort of, you know, number of visits on the product page. Uh, but the conversion is going down uh, in terms of the number of conversions, uh, num the number of, uh, you know, people buying it. Uh, so that, that ratio is going down and you, you don't understand exactly why, but these are the kind of drivers to it. So you, you know, one more example of why data driven analysis is really important for you to, uh, you know, keep a tab on what, what is exactly going on. Yeah. It's the intangible part, which is difficult to see and but it yeah but you're right it boils down to customer experience at the end of the day and keeping abreast of what the expectation is today as opposed to when you build that store and you uploaded that product image uh you know which you would never look at on a on a day-to-day -day basis you would never pay attention to uh the products that are already selling you you would be fine with it but yeah these things tend to happen over time agreed agreed I think, Kavira, I think we had enough of questions and discussions for the day. So I think, you know, we'll end this one here and, you know, we'll figure out a few more topics for our audience in the upcoming sessions. Absolutely, Deepak. Happy to be a part of this and available whenever you need me. Thank you. Thank you, Avril. Thank you for joining us today. Goodbye, everyone.